If you ever looked at this instrument and wondered what is that and why it's not a cello, we are going to learn that today. It's not a cello. Hi, my name is Agda Macias, I'm the Gamba Geek and I'm going to tell you the five differences between a viola da gamba and a cello and one thing that might look like a difference but it's really not. The first difference is the number of strings. A cello will always have four strings, which is kind of boring. A viola da gamba, on the other hand, will have six strings or sometimes seven strings. You can even find small viola da gambas with five strings on them. And not only we have a different number of strings, we also tune them differently. The tuning of a cello is A, D, G, C, from high to top. And if you get a viola da gamba, we have the tuning as D, A, E, C, G, D, A, if you have the seventh string. And that brings us to our next difference. The two instruments come from different family of instruments. So the cello comes from the violin family. So it's really just a big violin. But please don't tell the cellists I said that. But really, the violin is the treble of the family, you have a viola, which is in the middle range, and then you have the cello, which is the low end. The viola da gamba, on the other hand, has its own family of instruments. This one that I usually play is a bass gamba, but we also have smaller ones, like a treble viol and a tenor viol, and we also have the large one, which is the violone, super cool, and the grandfather of the contrabass, which does not belong to the violin family. All these different sizes of your da gamba come in different tunings. They all share the same proportion between the strings, so fourths with a third in the middle, but they start and end in different notes, which is something super cool to play. Beyond the different sizes of your da gamba, we also have different types. So this one that I'm holding, you already know it's a bass viol, but it's also a French model, late baroque, with seventh string added. But you can also find a bass viol with six strings and a little bit smaller that you can use to play Italian or English repertoire, which is a bit different. The frets are really interesting, because if you play something out of the frets, you will hear that the sound is a bit dull. But if you play it here, it's so much brighter. And that's because the fret acts like this wood here, so it sounds like an open string. And it also is really good for us to make chords. So. The viola da gamba is a mix between a lute and a bowed instrument, so we have the best of two worlds. And the fifth difference is how we hold the bow. So a cello player will hold the bow something like this. Sorry, I'm not a cello player. But a gamba player will hold it like this. We call it the underhand grip. And it's a really nice way to hold the bow in my opinion because we can push a bit with our fingers and that makes the hair tighter or looser. And we use that to do some effects when we play. And because we hold the bow like this, we can do a lot of articulations and dynamics, and we can also feel the string vibrating on our hand. The last thing I want to talk about is the end pain, which may seem like a difference, but it's really not. The end pain is that metal stick under the cello that holds the cello on the ground. And the viola da gamba, as the name says, is the viola that it stays on your gamba, on your legs we don't use the metal end pin. That should be a difference, but why do I say it's not? I say that because if you compare a viola da gamba and a baroque cello, the baroque cello is also held at the player's legs. The end pin is a modern invention, and I don't think you can compare a viola da gamba with a modern cello, because that's comparing apples to oranges. I hope I could explain the difference between a viola da gamba and a cello. And if you learned something today, consider subscribing so you can hear more about viola da gamba and listen to more viola da gamba music, either old and new.